evening. Howdy hi. And can you see anything in front of me? No. You can't no. see that? No. 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 Remember the old cookbook? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yes. Wonderful. So I'm learning about <laughs> keeping my head up. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And it sounds good? Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. How are you feeling? Yeah, really good. Good. Had a bit of a nana nap this afternoon. It's nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> great, mate. <laughs> you want to introduce us or what? You want to do it or what? Yeah, well, I'd just um, like to uh, make an apology first. Is that all right? <laughs> Go for it. Well, first I'd like to uh, welcome Craig and Kathy Jorgensen to the meeting, uh, to this uh, off the cuff, and I'd like to introduce myself, especially to Kathy and her friends. My name's Chris Hilton, and you all know Mark Davidson, of course. You want to say hello, Mark? Hello, Mark. <laughs> You're supposed to say hello to Craig and Kathy. Oh, hello, Craig and Kathy. How's it going, guys? And friends. <laughs> and friends. And friends. We welcome you all to Off the Cuff as brothers and sisters. And thank you for your instruction. I really enjoyed it. Right, so let's start. You ready to start, Mark? Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Welcome, brothers and sisters. The body needs to be spoken to. That's why we're doing this study. We're just picking out random scriptures that associate with different parts of the body and we're looking at the teaching around each part of that body and bringing it in to the reality of maybe Yahushua speaking to us. Fantastic. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. So that's how we're moving with this. They're just random scriptures I'm not even touching the surface of the depth of the study that you can go into about the body. And we just want you to see that all through the scripture, parts of the body are mentioned, which give us teaching. So we believe that the body at this time and in history, especially prophetic history, needs to be spoken to. There's a lot of things that are going on in the body that should not be going on in the body, including myself. These things need to be said and known so there is an obvious direction and standard we all need to understand that we have to come to. So we have to come to this place. We have to do it. Now the word overcome it means to get to the place where your concern is more for your neighbour than yourself. That's the instruction to the body. We have to get to that place where we will love our neighbour more than our life. That our neighbour is more important than our life. Dwell on that. Think of that. That's a very hard place to get to, totally unselfish place. And that's where we're aiming. That's the purity that the master wants in his body. <clears throat> and you can't do it without Yahushua. That's why we need to get immersed and get his power in us. The word Yisrael means to overcome with El. You can't do it of yourself. So these are two vital points in our study tonight, okay? We don't take Yahushua's instruction seriously enough. Teachings are just knowledge to most of us where they should be a reality. We hear the teachings, it's just knowledge. It's not our reality. It's just up here knowledge. It's not here reality. And that's where we have to get to, to take his word as our reality, not the reality that we see out there, which is fake. Most people are living 
a fake life, including Nazarene and Messianics. And we have come out of the whore, we think. We have come out of her, but Yahushua isn't satisfied with us. He wants to clean us up. We have to understand that, that he's doing a job in us. Okay, so the first scripture we're going to, we're, the first word we're going to look at is the voice. So we're still in the head. We haven't left the head yet from this teaching. The voice is in the mouth. So we're hoping we can get down your throat tonight and make you bring up stuff that doesn't need to be in you. But of course, only his word can do that. Right, now the first, first scripture we're going to look up is Revelation chapter 2 and 3. So Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 is our first scripture. Tell me when you've got it, Mo. Got it, mate. Revelation 2. <clears throat> and the voice, we want to hear what the voice is saying to the assemblies, don't we? Yes, mate. What is the spirit, the voice of Yahushua saying to the assemblies today? We're all in some sort of an assembly, even if it's just a family. It's an assembly, it's a gathering. Not a full assembly, but it's an assembly. I think you know 12 for a synagogue, but we're not into that. Hmm. Verse 7 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. Now we've got to look for the word voice in the text we're going to look, look at. So we're looking at text and looking at the teaching, and voice goes with what the Spirit is saying to the assemblies, does it not? Hmm. To him who overcomes. So who has to overcome? We do. We have to overcome. To him who overcomes, I shall give, him, give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim. How good would that be? How good would that be? And that means here on earth, doesn't it? Yeah, so who is the tree of paradise? Yehusha. The word, isn't it? Mm. And the word is Yehusha. We're going over to verse 17 now. Again, here's the instruction. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. To him who overcomes. Again, we have to do this. I shall give some of the hidden manna to eat. How nice would that be? And I shall give him a white stone, and on that stone a renewed name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Mm -hmm. So the renewed name would be the name of Yahuwah going to Yahusha because he came in the flesh and then he went back onto the throne, didn't he? It could only be Yahuwah, couldn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> so the new name's Yahusha. And the message of the assembly of Thyatira write, Say this to the son of Elohim, who has the eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like burnished brass. I know your works and love and service and belief and your endurance. And as for your works, the last more than the first. But I hold against you that you allow the woman Isabel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and lead my servants astray to commit whoring and to eat food offered to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her whoring, and she did not repent. See, I am throwing her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her, in her into her into great with her go into great affliction, unless they repent of their works. So, who would she be today? She'd be the whore, wouldn't she? Yeah, she'd be the whore. And I shall slay her children with death, and all the assemblies shall know that I am the one teaching, searching the kidneys and hearts. So he's searching our kidneys and our hearts. 
And I shall give to each one of you according to your works. What's that telling us, brother and sisters? There's levels of reward. And we're going to be judged accordingly. A lot of people say, oh, he, he's not a judge. He doesn't judge us. But here it says he does. So he's angry with us, brothers and sisters, because if he, if, if he wasn't angry with us, there'd be all sorts of amazing things happening through the body. And we'd be hearing about miracles and amazing things happening. But we don't. We're not hearing about that. We're hearing about fighting and squabbling. There are some people that have come in into the Messianics uh, system and they're trying to make it into uh, a circus again, but a Messianic circus. They want to dominate and take over the same as the Christians have and it will just be, instead of true Messianics, it will just be another sect from Christianity. So we don't want to get caught up in that. Okay, now we're going to chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3, and we're listening to what the Spirit is saying to the assemblies. And the messenger of the assembly in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirits of Elohim and the seven stars says this, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains as it is about to die, for I have not found your works complete before Elohim. Remember then how you have received and heard, <clears throat> what you received in the beginning and what you heard. And watch and repent. We have to be in that mode of repentance, willingness to see our wrong. If then you do not wake up, I shall come upon you as a thief, and you shall not know at all what hour I come upon you. Nevertheless, you have the few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they walk with me in white because they are worthy in white. He who overcomes shall be dressed in white robes. If you overcome and you have that love for your neighbour, that you will consider them more than yourself, you'll get the white robe. And that's what you need to get to the wedding feast. And I shall by no means blot out his name from the book of life. So we need to have our name in the book of life. But I shall confess his name before my father and before his messengers. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. Again, the warning keeps coming and coming. And the messenger of the assembly of Philadelphia write, He who is set apart, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens, says this, I know your works again. See, I have set before you an open door. He knows our works. He knows how we're living. He knows everything about us, what we think, what we feel. He knows everything from everyone in the whole world at the same time as my wife said to me this morning. What an amazing person to be able to do that. And he can. That before you open door and no one is able to shut it, that you have little power yet have guarded my word and have not denied my name. See, I am giving up those of the congregation of Satan who say they are Yehudim, Nazarim, Messianics. They say they are Yehudim and are not, but lie. That's what's going on in amongst us, brothers and sisters. We need to stop this. See, I am making them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Because you have guarded my word of endurance, I also shall guard you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon all the world to try those who dwell on the earth. Just like Goshen, the land of Goshen was safe. It didn't get any of the plagues. 
None of the animals were dead. He has the power to protect us. So we need to overcome and keep precious his word and his name. Don't ever let go of it. Never, never, no matter what. Verse 11, see I am coming speedily. Hold what you, hold what you have that no one take your crown. He who overcomes again, I shall make him a supporting post in the dwelling place of my Elohim, and he shall by no means go out. And I shall write on him the name of my Elohim and the name of the city of my Elohim, the renewed Jerusalem. How marvellous is this? How wonderful is this? How incredible is this for us? You renew Jerusalem, which comes down out of, out of the heaven from my Elohim and my renewed name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. Here we go again. And to the messenger of the assembly of Lower Dekia, write, the Amen, the trustworthy and the true witness, the beginning of creation, of the creation of Elohim says this. I know your works, that you are neither hot, you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. There's our instruction. He wants us hot for him or cold. That's what he wants. Which way? Okay? So because you are lukewarm, and that's what the body is at the moment. The body is lukewarm because they can't give up their desires of things from the world, what the world is offering. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. How would you like to be vomited out of his mouth? Where do you go from there to what? What is the end of his vomit? Because you say, rich I am, how arrogant, and I am made rich, how arrogant, and need none at all, how arrogant, and do not know what you that you are wretched and pitiable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. What is gold refined in the fire? What does it mean? What is this gold refined in the fire? Mark, you're going to look up those two scriptures. To heal them, 119, verse 72. The Torah of my, the Torah of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Okay, so we can see that his word is better than silver and gold. It's more precious. It's more valuable to our being to have that word in our being, knowing that is life to us. It's more precious than what the world can offer us. We have to overcome this. And Mishle 30, verse 5. Well, the, uh, there's also verse 127, which says... Uh, 127. Therefore I have loved your commands more than gold, even fine gold. There you are, same thing. And then Mishle 30, verse 5, <clears throat> says, Every word of Eloah is tried. He is a shield to those taking refuge in him. He's a shield to us taking refuge. Every word, if we take it into us, we're taking refuge in him and every word has been worked to its fullest capacity so that we know the end of it and the beginning of it and we know that it's very powerful and will work especially if it's used in love so that's how precious the word is to us now brothers and sisters i want to ask you is the word that precious to you you might say, oh, yes, 
and it's from your mind. Oh, of course, it's so precious. And it's from your mind. But is the reality in your heart that you are adoring the word, loving the word, adoring? That's our worship. That's our adoration. This is the way you do it. We need to go there. So I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, verse 18, so that you become rich and white garments, so that you become dressed, so that the shame of your nakedness might not be shown and anoint your eyes with ointment so that you see. We need to see this. Verse 19, as many as I love, I reprove and discipline. So be ardent and repent. Are you willing to be disciplined, brothers and sisters? Or do you just take it on the chin and think it's Satan when it's really Yahushua showing us he's not happy with what we're doing? This is the reality that we need to know. Not blame Satan, but look at ourselves. Verse 20, see, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my what? Voice. There's the first word, voice. We're getting down your throat with this teaching, we hope. So there's the first teaching around the word voice. So I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I shall come in to him and dine with him and he with me. That's where you can prove the truth. That's where you can prove that you can have a relationship with the Creator, but it's only by belief. And isn't he wonderful? You can't have it any other way but by belief. So be it. Yeah, so be it. To him who overcomes, I shall give to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. There you are, brothers and sisters. There's the teaching about voice. <clears throat> are we hearing his voice through his word? Are we going there? Do we look at it this light? Yeah. Next um, word we're going to look at is brain or mind, mainly, mainly the mind. And that's Mark 5, verse 1 to 20. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Yep. Now, this is after Yahushua calmed the storm. He walked on the water. He came, on, came in the boat. He calmed the storm and stopped the waves. And then the boat came over to the Gadareans. And they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadareans. And when he came out of the boat immediately, there met him, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Now here we're going to look at the state of man the state that man is in when we come to Yahusha. This is the state that we're in. And we're looking at the mind. We're looking for the mind. Right? This man <clears throat> came with, from the tombs with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one was able to bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces, and no one was able to tame him. Have you been like that, brothers and sisters? No one could tame you, you wouldn't see, you wouldn't go along with anything. And continually, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out, 
and cutting himself with stones. That's what we've been doing, crying out everywhere we go, literally cutting ourselves with stones, you know? What is this? Why am I in this state? What's happening to me? Why, why, why? And seeing Yahushua from a distance, he ran and bowed down to him. Here, this is something interesting. This man that no one could tame, there's Yahushua standing there. Yahushua's done nothing. This man's run up to him and bowed down to him. And having called out with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with you, Yahushua, son of the Most High El? Swear to El him not to torture me. Don't we sort of say this when we hear the word come to us? For he had said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. So here we can see what's in us. We didn't know what was in us, but here we can see what was in us. And he was asking him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, because we are many. And he begged him very much. There's the man begging. It's not really the man, is it? That he would not send them out of the country. They didn't want to leave the country. They didn't want to get out of the country they were in because they were creating mischief, freaking everybody out, terrifying everybody. <clears throat> Now a great herd of pigs was there feeding near the mountains. Yahushua's just standing there saying this, told the unclean spirit to come out. And all the demons begged him, saying, send us to the pigs so that we enter the, into them. And he gave them permission. This is going on right in front of the onlookers. And the unclean spirits came out and entered into the pigs. They were about 2,000. 2,000 what? Evil spirits. So 2,000 evil spirits went into the pigs. So that man had a whole different makeup and body composition to the pigs, didn't he? Interesting that they go into pigs. What do pigs mean? You know, so Yahushua says, gave them permission. Yahushua's just standing there. Calm as. So we're learning how to behave before demons, before these horrid creatures. About 2,000 and the herd rushed down a steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. And those who fed the pigs fled and reported into the country and in the, in the city and in the country and they went out to see what had taken place. So there's all these people that have come out from the city and from the country, 2,000 pigs ran down and committed suicide. So you know where suicide comes from. And you also know that the body composition of the pig could not hold what the man could hold in him. The animals can't be demon-possessed. They just go nuts. And if a demon comes into an animal, it just goes nuts and just destroys itself. That's just how it is. It can't hold it. Whereas the man could hold 2,000 of them. So you can imagine what that man was doing to all the country folk, all the city folk. Everyone knew about him. Screaming and wailing at night. There'd be never any rest or peace, would there? Day and night. So they came to Yahushua and saw the demon-possessed one, him who had the legion, sitting and dressed and in his right what? Mind. And they were afraid. We all need to come to the right mind, brothers and sisters. We all need to see the truth about ourselves. We all need to see what is living in us. There are things, dirty things in us that we have not repented of. And they are called strongholds harbouring inside us like a cancer 
and they're destroying us. And we need to come to terms with the word, with Yahushua. We need to cry out to him. We need to beg him to set us free from these things by confessing them. And he will deliver us. How wonderful is this? What a wonderful teaching. Right, so they were all afraid. And those who saw it related to them what was done in the de to the demon-possessed one and about the pigs. You imagine everybody coming from the city and the town, stand, Yahushua still standing there, calm as, doesn't say anything. He's just standing there. They see the demon-possessed man in his right mind. Yahushua puts us in our right mind. Nobody else can. All that horrible experience that man went through in his life, he couldn't get relief. But Yahushua came to give relief to all of us and put us in our right mind. And all these people, this man was famous, obviously. They're all standing there looking at the dead pigs, looking at Yahushua, looking at this man. And what do they do? How do they react? And they began to plead with him to leave their borders. <laughs> they were so freaked out, they wanted him to go away because it was so overwhelming. Because the, the emissaries that are with him, they just come out of the boat where he walked on the water and stopped the waves. And they're just, you know, shocked out of their heads. And so they see all this happen. They probably knew about it. Yahushua knew about it, of course. But it's all in his plan. Everything's planned. Everything in your life is planned. He knows everything. Right, then we go on further in verse 18. As he was entering into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. So he wanted to be with Yahushua. And Yahushua did not allow him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and report to them what the Master has done for you and how he had compassion on you. You see, the people couldn't stand Yahushua being around them. They were terrified that they might have demons too. So they asked him, please go. But he left a person there to witness for him. He wasn't worried. All right. And he left and began to proclaim in Decapolis and all that Yahushua had done for him and all marvelled. Everyone was in shock. Everyone was marvelled because he was in, the right, in his right mind. Yahushua put him in his right mind and gave him a job to do to help those around him. And he took it on board and did it because he was so grateful for the deliverance. Are you grateful for your deliverance, brothers and sisters? Do you treasure your deliverance, that you actually have been delivered from wickedness and evil? Do you realise what he has done? Or are you still going on in pettiness? We need to grow up and understand that pettiness and arguing and fighting is demonic activity. It's strongholds. We should love our brother and sister. And this is what we have to do to overcome. The body needs to be spoken to. How am I going, Kathy? <laughs> we love you, Kathy, and your friends. Right. So be it. So be it. The next part of the body, we're still in the head. We're going to look at um, the blood. And that's in Mark 5.21. But I looked up a scripture in Luke, and when I looked it up, I realised it was the same chapter as we just looked at, and it followed on from there. So I thought I'd follow on from where we are. And so that goes uh, to the end of the chapter. We'll see what's going to happen next with Yahushua. Wherever he went, whatever he did, Amazing things happen. And he said, it's going to happen to us. But do we see it? Do we see all this happening in the body? No. Not yet. Not yet. 
We have a lot of overcoming to do. He's dealing with us, with the assembly. He's dealing with us. We need to clean out so that we can come into this place. Right. Verse 22. Yeah. And see, one of the rulers of the congregation came, yeah, it was his by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. So would a ruler of the congregation be one of the Sanhedrin? I think so. Maybe, yeah. I think so. And here he is begging, bowing at his feet, Yahushua's feet, and begging him strongly, saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her and heal her, and she shall live. So Yahushua says, yeah, straight away, I'm on the way. Come on, boy, show me the way. And he went with him, and a large crowd was following him, and they were thronging him. Yahushua was lovely. He just went bang. He responds to everything like that. He wants to show us. He wants to win the battle. We have to be like this. We're in a battle, and it's against evil taking over the mind and the bodies of people trying to destroy them. <clears throat> Right. And he went with him and a large crowd was following him and they were thronging him. That would mean that they were so excited they were touching him and pushing him and everyone's getting pushed and thronged together, yeah? Mm. And he suffered much, sorry, uh, verse 25, and a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Well, that would be a horrendous thing for her, and had suffered much from many physicians, like today, you go to see the doctor, he gives you pills, they had side effects, and the side effects need more pills to counteract those side effects, and then you eventually die, you know. Those um, naturopaths are very good today, just want to say that, and spent all she had and had or spent all that she had and was no better, but rather became worse. How about that? Mm -hmm. She became worse from seeing the doctors. Having heard about Yahushua, she came behind in the crowd and touched his garment. In the other um, chapter in Luke, it says she touched his zitzit. You know we should be wearing zitzits, don't you? All the time. Wear our zitzits. Because there's something special about them. And that's what she touched, his zitzits. 28. 28. For she said, if I only touch his garments, I shall be made well. This is what she thought in her what? mind. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. How wonderful. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. How wonderful. How wonderful is that? Because she touched him. But she snuck up and did this in private. She snuck up through the throng. Imagine what she would have to fight. Imagine her life previously. She'd be having rags that she had to wash and there'd be a dreadful smell and she'd have to work and labour this way and she couldn't go anywhere and do things like everybody else could because of the smell and the issue and all that sort of stuff. Her life must have been hell. And she ended up with nothing. The doctors took all the money like they still do today. So this is talking to us about our, the healing of the body. And immediately Yahushua, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? Can you imagine that? Well, the apostles went off their face because they're all rushing to get to this young girl to see the healing. He was going to heal this young girl from this leader of the congregation. And Yahushua stops everyone says, who touched me? <laughs> the being in our normal minds, and he's taught one, said to him, 
You see the crowd is thronging you and you say, who touched me? And they're getting all frustrated and he was looking around to see who, her who did this. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done to her, came and fell down before him and spoke to him all the truth. So she's telling everybody in the congregation and he's making everybody know that he knows when power comes out of him. He knows when something's going down. You can't fool him. You can't get away with it. You can't sneak up on Yahushua. He's not going to let you. He wants to bring it out in the open what he's doing. Yeah. So we have to be people ready to say what we're doing. And he said to her, Look at him, isn't he wonderful? Daughter, your belief has healed you. What's this saying to us? Healing in the body. What's this saying to us? Your belief has healed you. Her belief in just touching him. Go in peace, he says, and be relieved from your affliction. How wonderful. How wonderful. And he pulled her out of the crowd so the crowd could see his loving kindness. The crowd could see how concerned he is not only for the girl dying but for everybody else. You can go on and finish reading that chapter. So this woman was brought from death to life, the same as the young girl was. He's bringing death from death to life. He's bringing life wherever he goes. He's touching and healing. His word is amazing. So we need to understand if we get that word in us and digest it, we wear our zitzits, we do the commandments, we live what he tells us, there's healing in your belief. Your belief has made you whole. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, amazing. So we've done his voice, we've done his brain, the mind, and we've done, we're going to do, and we've done the blood, right? The next one is the beard. Beard? You've got a beard there, Mark. <laughs> so we need to look in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and 18 we're going to do. When you were saying about belief, um, it wasn't just good enough for her to sit there and believe that Yusha would heal her. She had to go and be, she had to act on it. Yeah. So belief means obedience, doesn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. She had to actually participate. Mm. But she had no other choice because she had set her mind on believing that if she did that, that she would be healed. So she had to do what she said. It wouldn't be easy for her going through a crowd, would it? No. But she got through and he went, Zap, who touched me? <laughs> Isn't he amazing? Oh, we learn because you know the scripture was written for those in the last days. All these stories, all this reality right through the last 6,000 years, has been written for us in the last days because of the massive evil, evil that's going to come upon the world. Yeah. What? <laughs> massive <an> eagle. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a sign of Satan too, isn't it? It is, yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. First Samuel. Verse 17, chapter 17 and 18. So we're looking for the beard. What teaching are we going to get from the beard? Mm. Are you enjoying the teaching from all the different parts of the body? Oh, it's just amazing. You don't know where it's going to go, where it's coming from. Yeah. How about you, Kathy and Craig, and your friends? <laughs> it's nice to meet people, even though you haven't met them, but you're making an association. Yeah. I hope you're enjoying it, guys. Mm. Right, so here we go. 
Verse 17. And the Philistines had gathered their armies for battle and came together at Soko, which belongs to Yehuda, and encamped between Soko and Ezkla at Ephes Damon. And Shaul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah <clears throat> and drew up in battle array to meet the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with the valley between them. So we've got the situation that's going on, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Then a champion, a champion. We all need a champion. The body needs champions. Came out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. So that's about 18, 19 feet high. So this room I'm in, I don't know if you can see the ceiling. See right up there? Yeah. That's 10 feet high in here. Yeah. Is that the right spot, Mark? Yeah. So that's 10 feet high in here, so it's double that. That's six that metres. Yeah, imagine a man that big coming at you. That's like two stories high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a nepho. Yeah, and he'd be like Matthew's size, but that big. <laughs> Bodybuilder. I don't to tell Matthew that. It's <laughs> all right. Right. Uh, five, I think. Five, yeah. And a bronze helmet was on his head, and he was armed with a scaled armour. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze, which is about nine stone, 57 kilos. Oh. It's nine stone in, in stones, and it's 57 kilos. That's how much his coat weighed. That's, the, that's just about... A little bit more than what Victor weighs. She's 10 stone. Wow. <laughs> wow. And bronze shin guards on his legs and a bronze spear between his shoulders. And the wood of his spear was like a weaver's beam. You know what a weaver's beam is? A weaver's beam is a great big lump of wood, you know, when they do all that weaving? Oh. Yeah? Oh. It's one of them. Wow. And his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels and a shield bearer went with him, went before him. 600 shekels is about 6.79 kilos or 15 pounds. So that was the spearhead. <laughs> you know, a little spearhead? Okay. That's how big it was, 6.79 kilos. <laughs> Imagine that coming at you. <laughs> and he stood and shouted at the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Shaul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me and I'll chew him up. <laughs> if he is able to fight with me, and shall smite me, then we shall be your servants. But if I overcome him and shall smite him, ha, 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 then you shall be our servants and serve us. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, imagine this giant saying that to us. Then the Philistines said, This day I shall reproach the armies of Israel. That's a pretty bad thing to do in those days, to reproach them. It's just mocking them. Give me, a, give me a man and let us fight together. So where's the man? Where's the champion? He's their champion. Where's Israel's champion? And Shaul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine and they were broken down and in great fear. In your life, brothers and sisters, there are going to be Goliaths. 
that are going to break you down and fill you with fear. But here you're going to learn how to deal with that. Isn't that wonderful? Verse 12. Now, Darwin, here we go into the life of Darwin. Now, Darwin was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem and Ye in Yehuda, whose name was Yeshai. And he had eight sons. And in, in the days of Shaul, the man was an old, he was old among men. So he's an old man, Darwin's father. And the three oldest sons of Yeshai went. They had gone to follow Shaul to the battle, and the names of his three sons who were in the battle were Eliah, and the, fir the firstborn, and the second Abinadab, Abinadab, and the third Shammah. Are you reading this with me, brothers and sisters, flowing with it? You know how precious the word is. And Dawid was the youngest. And the three oldest followed Shaul. But Dawid went and returned from Shaul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So the older brothers went to the battle and he had to go back to the, to the sheep. Uh, that's giving us a circumstance. So we see the circumstance. And for 40 days the Philistine drew near, near morning and evening and took his stand. Forty days. This was going on, this abuse, this terrifying of the armies of Israel. Then Yeshua said to his son Dawid, Please take to your brothers an ether of this dried grain and ten, ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp. So obviously the father doesn't know what's going on. It's been 40 days. He wants to hear about his sons. And he thought, I'll send them some tucker, as you would at home. How nice. Mm. They're in battle and he's considering them. It's very simple, isn't it? Verse 18, and take these ten cheeses to the commander of the thousand and see how your brothers are and bring back, back news of them. So he's been given instruction from his dad what to go and do. For Shaul and they all... The men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So they're all there. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a herdsman. And took, so this sheep is keep being mentioned as sheep all the time. And took and went, to, uh, went as Yishai had commanded him. So he's commanded to go and do this. He was an obedient lad. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and they shouted for the battle. And Israel and the Philistines drew up in battle array, army against army. And David left, the, left his supplies in the hand of the keeper of the supplies and ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. How you going, mate? How's all this? What's going on? You know, Dad wants to know. Dad wants to see how you are. And he was speaking with them and saw the champion, the Philistine of Gath. Look at Dawid's attitude to it. Goliath, by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines and he spoke according to the same words and Dawid heard. So Dawid heard all these dreadful things he's saying. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, ran from him and were in great fear. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Brothers of the assemblies, when you hear the Catholic Church or somebody, somebody wants to come and wipe you off the planet because of what you're saying and what you're doing, because you're going against them and they send a champion to wipe you out. Wouldn't you be afraid? So they were full of great fear because of this champion and the loud voice. There he is 19 feet high, so... Imagine the echo of his voice and when he hit the ground, bang. And the man of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? For he has come up to reproach Israel. And it should be that the man who smites him, the sovereign, is going to enrich him with great riches and give his 
give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption in Israel. And Doeth spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who smites this Philistine and shall take away the reproach from Israel? Take it away, the reproach, the fear, the horrible thing. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should reproach the armies of the living Elohim? Who is he? Dawid's got a very different attitude to the rest of the um, army of Israel. He's looking at them all and he has a whole different idea. And the people answered him according to this word saying, that is what was done for the man who smites him. And Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men and Eliab's displeasure burned against David. So here's his brother getting furious at what David said because he thinks he's just a kid. He's just a, a sheep herder. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness, making him feel little like nothing? I know your pride and the evil of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. You just want to check it all out and see it. You've snuck away and you're evil. You're doing the wrong thing. So this is the sort of temperament that was in the people, even in David's brothers. They were full of fear and anger and hurt and displeasure. And David said, now what have I done? Was it not but a word? He just said what he thought. And he turned around from him towards another and said the same word. And these people answered him a word like the first word. And when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Shaul, and he sent for him. Because of his words, because of the elegance and the graciousness that he spoke and the respect for the armies of Israel, it went to Shaul, the, the sovereign. And so he sent for him. He wanted to see him. And David said to Shaul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant is going and shall fight with this Philistine. There's this young kid, and he doesn't want everyone's hearts to fail. Here's the champion coming in. He had a different attitude to the Goliath, and we have to have the right attitude to the Goliath that comes against us, brothers and sisters. We have to enter into that. This attitude, this is the way to come against your Goliaths. And they're all mindsets and hurts and upsetments trying to crash us down. So look at the wonderful thing he's going to do. And Shaul said to David, David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth. And this man has been a man of battle since his youth. Then David said to Shaul, your servant has been tending sheep for his father and when a lion or a bear came and took the lamb out of the flock, I went after it and smote it and rescued it from its mouth. And when it rose again, I caught it by the... When it rose against me, I caught it by the... Beard. Here's the beard. You are excited to get beard, weren't you? Beard, yeah. Right, mate. Right? <laughs> I caught it by its beard and smote it and killed it. Hey, this is the champion. He's already been trained. He's already been fixed up, ready to attack the giant, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Your servant has smitten both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, seeing he has reproached the armies of the living Elohim in a disgusting way running it down, filling everyone with fear. That's Satan's work. We don't come into that. We ignore that. And David said, Yahuwah, who delivered me from, from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he does deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Shaul said to David, look what he says, go and Yahuwah be with you because he knew Yahuwah. Shaul knew Yahuwah. He could see 
that Yahuwah was with Darwin. And Shaul dressed Darwin with his garments and he put a bronze helmet on his head and put a coat of armour on him. And Darwin girded his sword over his garments and began to go. But he had not tried them. Then Darwin said, in other words, they were too big for him and cumbersome. And Darwin said to Shaul, I am not able to go with these for I have not tried them. So Darwin took them off. And he took his staff in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones from the wadi and put them into the shepherd's into a shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. Brothers and sisters, you need your smooth stones. What is the stone? Yahusha. Yeah. He's the cornerstone, isn't he? Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Held the whole temple up. Where the temple? Mm. Verse 41. And the Philistine came and began drawing near to Dawid. And the man who bore the shield went before him. So there's this great big lumbering om onyx. Is that the right one? Right word? Ox. Great big lumbering ox coming at him. Look at Darwin's attitude. And when the Philistines looked about, when the Philistine looked about and saw Darwin, he despised him. For he was a youth and ruddy and good looking. And the Philistine said to Darwin, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? He's trying to freak him out. And the Philistine cursed Darwin by his mighty ones, by his idols. I mean, how extreme and filthy is this? How dreadful. This is what you're going to cop if you're going to go out with the smooth stones. You're not going to be afraid. You're going to get abused and cursed. A lot of believers don't want to go there, though. I can understand why they don't. But... I can also understand that if we don't overcome, we're not going to make it. We won't be in the first resurrection, as Lou says. And the Philistine, verse 44, said to Darwin, Come to me, and I give your flesh to the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field. And Darwin said to the Philistine, and this is Lou White's favourite scripture. You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom you have reproached. This day Yahuwah shall deliver you into my hand and I shall smite you and take your head from you and give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines today to the birds of the heavens and the wild beasts of the earth, so that all the earth know that Elohim is Israel. How about that? That's the way to come at your Goliath with the name of Yahusha and, and your belief. And all this assembly know that Yahuwah does not save with sword and spear, for the battle belongs to Yahuwah, and he shall give you into our hands. The battle belongs to Yahuwah. Whatever battle you're in, whatever circumstance that is a battle, it belongs to Yahuwah. Stick by the word. And it came to be when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet Dawid, that Dawid hurried and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. Look at his strength of courage. He knew the word. He knew the truth and he was going with it. But this sort of fight that we have today is within brothers and sisters. It's all within. It's not killing people because that's not right. But it's all within. Verse 49. And Dawid put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine 
on his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. He didn't fall back, he fell on his face, humbled. Thus David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and smote the Philistine and killed him. And there was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his heath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they went for it. They fled. See what a champion, a real champion of the word in belief and respect of the word will do? Verse 52. And the men of Israel and Yehuda arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley of the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell along the way of Shaarium, even as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the children of Israel turned back from chasing Philistines and they plundered their camps. They got all the goodies. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his weapons in his tent. And when Shaul saw David, David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As your being lives, O sovereign, I do not know. So something's happening here with Shaul. And the sovereign said, Ask whose son the young man is. And when David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Shaul with the head of the Philistines, Philistine in his hand. Imagine that sight. Look what Shaul asks him. Shaul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David said, The son of your servant Ishai, the Bethlehemite. Bethlehemite. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We need to be the champion of the word. We need to attack. We need to go against all the evil that's out there. This is what Lou White's ministry is. He's breaking down the false teachings and bringing forth the right teachings. And there are so many Goliaths coming towards him. So many people that are stirred up and uncomfortable. For me, I can't see how they can't just love it because the word is so amazing and so precious. I can't understand why they just don't love what he's saying because I do. It brought me out of the bondage of the whore. It brought me out of the Pentecostal church and I've come into the knowledge, this knowledge and the real name and I've had the real immersion and the real experience, and you can hear his voice. Why wouldn't you want to hear his voice? Why wouldn't you want to have that relationship? So many people are just carrying on about stupid traditions that go nowhere. The body needs to be spoken to. The body is an idiot at the moment. We all need to get it together and come to unity and the right teaching. And this right teaching is coming forth now, brothers and sisters, not from me, but from Lou, this is just a little experience that we're going through here. I'd like you to read on to chapter 18 and it talks about Sha'ul and what he did to David, how he lied to him and tricked him and he was against him for the rest of his days. And it also talks about his brother, Jehonathan, uh, his son, Jehonathan, who, Jehonathan, who just fell in love with David and made a covenant with him, a love covenant. Like you and I have, Mark, over all these years, no matter, there's been so much that come against us, but they can't break it, can they? No. Nothing can break it. We're not giving in. We're having this love. It's right, isn't it, mate? Mm. And everyone's been jealous as hell about it and tried to stop it, haven't they, Mark? Yeah. So many people have done that. Where are they? How have their lives gone? Stop. Where are we? Where are we? We're in 
What's it called? Goshen. Goshen. We're protected. We're looked after and we're going on. It's coming forward. We need this love. We need to have more brothers and sisters that realise about this love and come into it. How long have we been, Mark? Uh, uh, about an hour and uh, 15 or so. Well, I think that's enough now, don't you? Yeah. It's yeah. enough for people to take in. There were four sections there tonight. Mm. And uh, I'd just like to say, in the body, this is from the teaching, Yahusha gets rid of our demons, our sicknesses, helps us overcome ourselves and leads us into the wisdom of loving others above ourselves. Israel, Israel is to overcome with El. That's what's going on in the body. People are getting healed and delivered and learning how to love. This is what is happening in the real body. Those that have come in have to go through a very hard ordeal to look at their heart and see what they really are. And I hope this teaching is going to be beneficial to all of you out there so you can see how wrong you are and that you need to love with an intensity. You need to love the word with an intensity. You need to, commandment number one is to love him with all your heart and soul and might and mind. You have to feel like that, that you won't deny him no matter what comes to you. You won't give in and deny him. Ah, oh, then your reward, what he gives you back. Are you like this? Ask yourself. Okay. It was wonderful to meet Craig and Kathy Jorgensen and friends. Yeah. Yahuwah, bless you guys. I don't mind hearing from you again. It would be great. Oh, um, wonderful. Can we finish now, Mark? <laughs> Can we? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to give me any direction, advice? No, it's pretty beautiful. It's true what you said about um, the uh, the love covenant. As I remember 15 odd years ago, you said uh, back when I was an idiot and smashing cars and doing all sorts of nutty stuff and friends and family were all coming to try and complain to you about me thinking you could change me and you decided that you were going to stick by me. You said, oh, I'm going to stick by Mark no matter what stupid things he does. I'm not going to, I'm always going to be his friend. And that's, yeah. people don't do that. You know, that's, yeah. amazing, that's amazing to me. So, that's how we have to be. For others. Mm. Well, you're going to be doing that, aren't you? Yeah, I want to cry. I feel really touched by all that. It's amazing. Do you, mate? Yeah. Well, it's wonderful. It's so important to be in the love. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. You didn't realise what we had. No, but I know everybody was so angry. So they furious. Still are. They still are. <laughs> still are. Aren't yeah. they? Yeah. I'm being hated because of my relationship with you. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. They hate me. They hate what I do or what I say. Mm. But it's worth it because yeah. look what we have. Yeah. You know, as, as buddies, mm. just wonderful. Mm. And we've been through so much stop crying. <laughs> we've been through <laughs> so much, eh? I'm not crying, it's just a Manuel. <laughs> All right. Hey, Manuel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. Mm. You happy with that? Oh, amazing word. Yeah. Beautiful. What about that woman with the blood? Mm. Imagine 12 years of washing all those rags and everything. Oh, it'd be so horrendous, so filthy and dirty and depressing and, you know, getting on your sheets and getting on everything. Mm. 12 years. Imagine that, 12 years. Oh. 
What agony. And the poor guy in the tombs all his life. Imagine the parents of that guy. And then they see him in his right mind. Oh, my goodness. What about their hearts? Mm. How would they have felt towards Yahusha? That's an exorcist movie they should make. That would be a beautiful movie. Yes. They, wouldn't, they wouldn't go there, though, because that's the truth. <laughs> They'd rather do this stupid Catholic thing where people are crawling across the ceiling. It's so yeah. Stupid. Yeah. 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 But there's deliverance in the body, isn't there? Yeah. And that's what deliverance is. If only people knew that they could just bring them to Yahusha, they'd be healed. Make the right commitment. He's not here to do all that, but in his body, if they come into his body, that can happen inside them. You can use all these things we're talking about if you want to. Yeah, it's cool. it. mm. you know, I don't mind whatever you want to use, whatever you think's well. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So look what you've achieved, mate. Mm. It's been lonely. Hasn't it been lonely, Mark? Yeah, n nobody understands. <laughs> no. Nobody. That's... Um... <laughs> That's why I think I just latched onto Lou because he just understood as well. You can see he's walking. Yeah. That, he just walked that walk, and he's got a sense. Yeah. Of, he's got a sense of humour about it. It's so important to have a sense of humour about it. Oh, if you can't laugh at yourself, where are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Imagine what's going to be said about this little number we've done tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not true. That's not what the scripture says. It's out of context. <laughs> yeah, what context? It's, not context? it's off the cuff. Yeah. yeah. It's the same. We're not looking at the context. Yeah. We're just looking at a, an experience with the word. Yeah. It's a very simple, easy thing. Yeah. yeah. And you can look up anything. And find all your answers like this. You can get on there and Google stuff and find out. I had to find out those weights. Yeah. What about him? Yeah. 90 <laughs> feet tall. Yeah. I wouldn't like to be standing behind him when he coughed in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Blow you over. You think of the funniest things, don't you? Yeah, knock you over. <laughs> <laughs> you die of poisoning. I wonder how much stuff he drank and how yeah. much food he ate. Yeah. Oh. Well, he would have been a genetically modified, <laughs> modified person. Oh, yeah. my yeah. goodness, mate. It's insane. To think that they had to deal with things like that. Yeah. But you... You can take those experiences and put it today to the word how we how we fight the battles. Yeah. Wasn't Darwin amazing? Yeah. The the compassion he had for the Yahuwah. Mm. Oh, mm. I love that. And he just came into the camp totally naive. Yeah. And they're all going on and on and on about what's gonna to happen to them and he's all he says is what's gonna to happen to him? If we yeah. kill him, well, they hadn't thought of that. No, no. <laughs> What's going to happen to him? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's all he could think of. Well, that's easy. I'll go and kill him. Yeah. It's amazing. There's so many different angles you can look at it all. It's like endless, isn't it? He's, <clears throat> he's been trained going after bears and stuff. Yeah. You don't think of that, do you? Going against no. a bear. No. He's just... Ruddy and good looking and skipping around. Hey, Dad wants to know how's it going, guys. Yeah, and how boring <laughs> would it, how boring would it be sitting in the field all day with sheep? He'd be practicing his aim against yeah. against hitting things off the rock. He'd be perfect yeah. shot. Yeah, <laughs> you has prepared him. Yep, be the best king. Like of he's all. prepared all of us. Yeah, we just have to find him. Mm. And Darwin went there, and then he saw what was going on, and he remembered the bear and the lion, 
I thought, oh, this is cool. We'll get in. Easy. Yeah. Mm. No fear, just went in there, bang. Mm. Huh? That's what we need to be. Mm. You know, just go in there. That's what Lou's doing, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Just going in there, fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, he's speaking out more and more. To see his That's See his confidence going up and up and up and up. It's amazing the things he says. Oh, Lou, let your confidence go up, mate. Yeah. Get in there and say it. Yeah. He's so sweet and gentle and mm. lovely and yeah. speaks with such a soft voice. Oh, you know, I can go there. I can't. That's just his temperament, though. Yeah. Up and down all over the place. I couldn't just go in there. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Mm. So, mate. Mate. How do you think this will go? Oh, great. Yeah. That'll be good. Well, I had um, me mate, uh, me mate Mike Temple. That's his name. Mike <coughs> Temple. Mike Temple. Yeah, he was asking today, where's the next show? Where's the next show? He's always got encouragement. Encouragement for us. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so there's people out there that are just really enjoying the teaching. Mike Temple, yeah. I've heard about how much you're enjoying this session. Yeah. I think that's wonderful, Mike. Mark told me all about you. Mm. We want to hear more from you, Mike. Tell us what you really think. Yes, I'm. Bless you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. How do you think the um, Kathy and Craig and Kathy will feel? Oh, they're great. They're legends, though. They're all, he's always saying <laughs> lovely things, encouraging things. Yeah. So, yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll enjoy being acknowledged, won't they? Yeah, people do. Yeah. That they feel part of it, and they are part of it. Yeah, of course. Trying to bring the body together globally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, Craig, I want Mark to tell you what he thinks about the teaching, so you can see what he's got to say. Go on. Yeah. I think it's good. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, it's great. I think I just uh, it's really encouraging, really uplifting and it's the truth. People are so polite today and just like Doe, they're they're so polite. But the giant's not polite. So you know, but there's you can't be too polite. You can be loving, but loving doesn't mean being a suck up, you know, and uh, putting up with stuff all the time. You can speak out the truth. And he wants to use us with the personality we've got, you know. For years I was upset because I didn't have your personality, you know, in the salon, everywhere. I can't do it. I don't have that personality. He used the personality I've got, you know. And then he said something really amazing a couple of months ago. He said, um, you're not supposed to have your personality anyway. You're supposed to die to yourself. And over time you take on his personality. So, you know. He uses us the way we are. Um, so you just get a bit over running yourself down, you know. Still do occasionally, but just I used to all the time. It's so boring. Uh, go, down the, go down to the wadi and get some smooth stones <laughs> when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> you need a trip to the wadi. <laughs> trip to the wadi. I think that means river, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, or just a creek, you know. Mm. Great. That's what you've got to tell them now. Yeah. People that have got a problem, oh, you need a trip to the wadi. A trip to the wadi. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Great dialogue, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, spoke to Adam this morning. He's happy. He's uh, just got himself a new green screen and soft boxes and he's doing all this research and... So he sent me this video and it's hilarious. I wanted to send it viral, but he told me I wasn't allowed to. So he's just sitting there playing this dance number and he's... 
He's just yeah. <laughs> dancing with his neck. It's fantastic. So, uh, so he's up. Oh. He's upping the quality on their end. It's really good. <clears throat> so, mm. so it's really good. So yeah, we're going to the Isle of Patmos yep. in the morning. <laughs> Oh, that'd be cool, will not it? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna. You're ready for that? We're gonna be sitting in a nice little coffee shop overlooking the Isle of Patmos. That'd be fabulous. That'd be a really interesting story, huh? Yeah. We're gonna get two weeks before we get there. No, not this time. Not this time. Oh. <laughs> Should be a few days this time. Hey, Adam. I hear you've got a new green screen, mate. And you're a neck dancer. That's pretty cool, Adam. You little neck dancer. Yeah. Happy neck dancing from Australia, baby. <laughs> yeah. Will you see me then or are you too afraid? No, I'll do it. It's all, it's all part of it, mate. Yeah. Get all those little bits and put them in, yeah. all the different people we're saying hello to. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what struck you, I want to hear your opinion, the same as um, Craig and Kathy do, what struck you about the teaching? Just having no fear. Having yeah. no fear, just, uh, just, uh, just facing what it is. There's no grey area with you. Uh, with you. There's just no grey area. There's either, you know... Right or wrong, and right is the covenant and the commandments, and wrong is everything else. So, yeah. someone's coming at you with that, you just go, if someone's coming at you with behavior and attitude in your day, you just look at it and go, Oh, that's nuts. You're nuts. I need a trip to the body. <laughs> yeah, you hold on a minute, I'm just going down to the body. I need to get some smooth stones. Yeah, and people don't face that in their day. They don't face the, um, the spirit. Because you're going to get it in the head. <laughs> the forehead. Yeah. Yeah, go people, people, live, don't people live in emotions. They don't, face <laughs> that, they don't face that people are full of evil spirits, you know, and we're supposed to love the people and mm. um, speak out or but sometimes just the love gets rid of the spirit. But you hate the spirit, love the person. So... Mm. How do you feel about the state of men when they come to Yahusha? Mm. Oh, when you were saying that, about cutting themselves and crying <laughs> out, why am I feeling like this and why am I feeling like that? All those mm. years in Christianity when you're just faced with your sin and every week you mm. go along to circus and repent. And that's it, this week's yeah. different. I've overcome it this week, I'm going to be different. By the end of the week you've stuffed it again and you're just crying out, why can't I overcome the desires of my mm. flesh. Why can't I overcome what's going on in my body? Coming to Yahusha, and boy, I tell you what, he power batters you around until you've overcome, mate. I tell you what, yeah, <laughs> the pain. Oh, the pain. You don't want to cross him, <laughs> even if you That's think right. it. Even if you think of crossing him, no, bang. Can't even think it. <laughs> but I wasn't gonna. I was just no, bang. <laughs> it's like a short. Yep, no problem. How long did it take you to realise that he was really there oh, in you? A couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah. Mm. That's about normal. Yeah. And I think he's... So... He seems to be working faster as time goes on too because he's got a job for people to do. Younger people or new people yeah. come along, he seems to be working. You, you see them raise coming along a lot quicker. Um, maybe. But the same process for everybody. So, mm. so without judging, you can just look at people and hear what they say, and you go, "Okay, well, that's where you're at. Great. <coughs> Everybody's at different levels, and the process is the same for everybody." Matthew and Lisa have had their experience with the um, Sabbath, yeah. and today was the first first time they didn't go. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, Amy said they'd posted on Facebook that they're um, no longer open on <coughs> day. Yeah. I thought oh, that was great. Very encouraging. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah, so well, there's some things you can put in that you think. Mm. Not a doctrinal thing. I'm not going to doctrines. I'm just going to the Word. Mm. 
That's what people need. The word. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Well, you could talk about the the struggle and the pain, like you said, hmm. what you went through with the pain. That was really good, what you just said. Hmm. You know, dig that out. And if you want to add more to that, just get your message across from how you feel about what you experienced while we were going through it. Well, I also feel like um, soon... <coughs> As it fits into the as it fits into the routine, I'm thinking also that um, uh, Lou's pretty push for time, and so we've got that show, and we've got this show, and we've got seminars, and we've got the girls' show, and we've got. I, I'm just really, while I can now, and I don't know what's going to happen in the future. As my kids grow older, I'll need more time with them. But while I can do it now and push myself to do it, I really just want to dominate the airways as much as I can and. Put as much of a body of work out there as we can. I'm thinking also, and it came to me today while you were reading as well tonight, um, I should probably do something myself as well. I don't know who I would do it with yet. N not because I've got some wonderful wisdom, just because um, with some y younger people, you know, maybe with Adam or uh, I thought maybe with Jason, or, or, you know, she's got time. I don't know. Just, just a different sort of show. That, I think that's fabulous. Because mm. I really? see, I see Christopher at the radio station, and I, I've always thought to myself, "Oh, wouldn't it be cool to have a Natsurum, you know, uh, TV channel?" And Amy's like, "You don't have time to do that. When are you going to do a TV channel? You know, you know how much work. You know, constantly going." And, and but that's what the YouTube is anyway, basically a channel. Yeah, but, of course. Um, yeah, and it's great. Yeah. You're literally doing it, Matt. Amy said, we should do a show together. I said, oh, we could do that too. Her and I. Yeah. Why not? For married couples. You know, like just, so as ideas come along. And then there's, right. the, there's the kids as well. So that there's all sorts of avenues there with the kids. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm redoing the Passover study that Josiah recorded last year because all the cartoons in it were Hollywood cartoons. Yeah. It's all copyright. I can't use it. So, But I've got his voice still. And I've yeah. joined, joined up with some little animation program, so I'm going to turn him into a little cartoon character. Oh. And the voice will be Josiah. So, right. teaching us all about Passover. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. So. We're going now, aren't we? Yeah, we love you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for tuning in to Off the Cuff. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, mate. Yeah. Love you. Love you, mate. Great. Have a fantastic day tomorrow, won't you? Yeah, we'll do. Yeah? I'll, I'll be in touch. Yep. Love it. See you, mate. See ya. Yeah. I know. I know.